Hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. This is Aditya and for the first time you are hearing my real voice on this channel. Up until now I have been using AI voiceover or just background music. But from here on I want to make things more personal and connect with you directly. Now let's get into today's video. It's about how to use anisotropy and different ways to use tangent map in Unreal Engine 5.5. If you are working on advanced material shading especially for things like pressed metal hair or fabric this video is going to be super useful in this video i will show you different ways to use the tangent material attribute in unreal engine first i will show you how to use nodes instead of a tangent map then how to use different tangent maps and also how to get the same result as these maps by using nodes then lastly how to use tangent map with pvr textures i will also break down how to sample flow map and build a custom material function to control anisotropic highlights. All right, let's dive in. And create a new material. Rename it. Then create its material instance. Drag and drop your material instance to your mesh. Open a material and let's create a basic material setup. For that, add a constant 3 vector, then connect it to the base color of your material. Right click and convert it to a parameter. Rename it then change its default color to white. Create a scalar parameter, rename it metallic and change its default value to 1. Again create a scalar parameter, rename it roughness and change its default value to 0 0.15. Lastly again create a scalar parameter and rename it anisotropy. Now what is anisotropy? Anisotropy refers to the directional dependence of the surface reflection. In simpler terms, instead of light scattering evenly in all directions like on a smooth plastic surface, anisotropic surface reflect light in a stretch pattern along a specific direction. Think of a material like pressed metal, vinyl record, hair or fur, and satin and silk. These all have that strict or combed highlight effect that's called anisotropy. Now, in a real engine and physical based rendering, the anisotropy pattern controls how stretched the specular highlight is and in which direction it stretches. So, when the value is 1, the highlight fully stretches along tangent to direction or horizontally. When its value is minus 1, the highlight stretches fully along by tangent B direction or vertically. And when its value is 0, which means the material is isotropic and it has a standard round specular highlight with no direction. For now, let's keep its default value 1. Now, the direction of anisotropy is determined by the tangent vector of the surface. So, what is a tangent map? A tangent map is a type of RGB texture that stores directional information about a surface in a tangent space. Spatially, it defines the direction of anisotropy across the surface. While a normal gives you surface detail, a tangent map gives you directional flow for effects like pressed metal or hair. A tangent controls the orientation of the grooves. It can be a 2D vector or a texture to define different anisotropic patterns across the material. A flow map uses the red and green channels of an image to define 2D vector in a tangent space, which is similar to normal map. The blue channel is going to be ignored. This is a sample of the different colors and what direction do they represent. So we need to pay attention to the UV directions because the tangent originally is going to be aligned with the UV coordinates. We are going to have a vector coordinates for Unreal from minus 1 to 1. So it's important to pay attention that in texture, the normal range is going to be 0 to 255, which doesn't match our 0 to 1. So we need to transform them from 0 to minus 1 so that the minus 1 is going to be 0 in the texture. The 0 is going to be 127 or 0 0.5 and the one in the tangent space vector coordinates is going to be 255 or 1 in the color texture. Now let's see how it works. So when the value of u and v is 1 and 1, the diagonal anisotropy goes from bottom left to top right. When the value of u and v is minus 1 and minus 1, it mirrors the same direction. Now it runs from top right to bottom left. When the value of u and v is minus 1 and 1, the flow is now from bottom right to top left. And when the value of u and v is 1 and minus 1, the direction reverses from top left to bottom right. 
so when the values are 1 and 1 or minus 1 and minus 1 the flow goes in the same direction and when their value are minus 1 1 or 1 minus 1 the flow goes in the same direction now let's say these effects in unreal and for that add an append vector node then for its a and b create two scalar parameter nodes and rename them tangent u and v respectively save the material and let's go to the material instance there we will see these parameters let's change their value and see the flow direction now let's try the value of u and v to 1 and 0 and anisotropic value to 1 this means the anisotropic direction follows the u axis or the x axis resulting in horizontal highlights across the surface then change the anisotropic value to minus 1 it aligns the highlight vertically along the v axis or y axis giving you a vertical anisotropic streak and when you reverse the value of u and v to 0 and 1 then when the anisotropic value is 1 the highlight go vertically and when the anisotropic value is minus 1 the highlight go horizontally now we will try the value of u and v as i have shown you before and see the direction of highlights so change their value to 1 and 1 then minus 1 and minus 1 then minus 1 and 1 and lastly 1 and minus 1 now let's change the group name and sort priority of each parameter then save it to make your master material neat and clean now let's take the anisotropy one step further so far we have seen how to manually input tangent directions using scalar values but for more complex or procedural control you can drive the tangent input using a texture map make sure to change its compression setting to vector displacement and disable srgb then save it open your master material here i have set up a basic master material with an anisotropy scalar parameter and change its default value to 1 now import your tangent map connect it to the tangent of your material you will see it working here Select your tangent map, right click, convert it to parameter, then rename it. Then change its group name and sort priority. Now we will add a tiling parameter and for that create a multiply node, then for its a create a texture coordinate node and for its b create a scalar parameter, then rename it. Change its default value to 1 and also change its group name and sort priority. then save it now let's open its material instance and see our material again open our master material and change the tangent tiling value to 5 for now now what if you only have a black and white texture like a gradient map or a noise mask but if we use it as a tangent it will not work properly in that case you can convert the grayscale data into a directional vector using math functions now again make sure to change its compression setting to grayscale and disable srgb then save it then drag and drop it to a master material now when we connect it to the tangent we will see that it is not working and to make it work we will use this texture to drive a sine and a cosine function this will give us two perpendicular directions based on brightness values then we combine them to rng of an append many node to create a 2d vector basically a uv direction after that we will normalize the vector to keep it clean and stable this will give us a tangent map with rng value with an empty b channel now connect it to the tangent and we will see that it is working properly select it right click and convert it to parameter then rename it then connect it to the tiling parameter and change its group name and sort priority now what if we want to get this same tangent effect like this maps without using any tangent maps 
So let me show you how to simulate a directional tangent map without using any texture at all, just with basic math and a texture coordinate node. Now we will start with a texture coordinate node which give us the UVs of the mesh. These UVs range from 0 to 1 across the surface. Then we will add a subtract node and connect it to the texture coordinate. Then we will subtract it by 0.5 and by subtracting it by 0.5 we will center the UVs so that the middle of the pattern is 0 which give us value to go from minus 0.5 to plus 0.5. This helps us to create a balanced tangent direction especially for effects like radial brushing or stripes. Connect it to the tangent of the master material. And we will see that it is giving the same result as the tangent map. Now what if we want to tile it? You can't just take your texture coordinate and multiply it with a scalar parameter. And tile it by 5 by 5 because that breaks it. So to tile it, we will use the frac node. This will break the tiling into looping value between 0 and 1 almost like a repeating gradient pattern. Then connect the frac node to A of the subtract node. We will see that it is tiling properly. Now what if we want to use all this tangent method in our material at the same time? So for that we will add two static switch parameters then connect them with our tangent as shown here. Then connect the switch parameter to the tangent of your master material. Select all tangent nodes, press C and rename it. Now select all parameters, then change their group name and sort priority. Change the default value of your tiling parameters to 1 and save it. Now let's check its material instance. Now let's complete our anisotropic setter by integrating it into a full PVR workflow instead of these nodes. This setup includes a base color, metalness, roughness, and the tangent map for anisotropy direction. Make sure to change their compression setting and sRGB setting as shown here and save them. Drag and drop this texture map to your master material. Connect them to their respective material attributes. Right click and convert them to parameter, then rename them. Add a scalar parameter to your anisotropy, rename it and change its default value to 1. Now select your tangent map, right click and convert it to a parameter then rename it. Connect it to the tangent of your material. Now you can see here that our highlights are not falling along our texture surface. So to control the direction of anisotropic highlights across a surface like brushed metal, vinyl record or hair strand, we need a custom tangent direction. This is where flow maps comes in. And for that, we will create a material function, then rename and open it. Here click on expose to library, so you can see this function in your library. Now we will add a texture object node. And add our flow map to it. Then we will pass it through a function input node to make the function flexible. So we can reuse it for different flow maps. Make sure to change this input type to texture2d. Then connect it to a texture sample to sample our flow map. Now we will add some nodes to our texture sample to tile our flow map. For that add a multiply node to the UVs of the texture sample. Then for its A add a texture coordinate node and for its B add a scalar parameter. Then rename it. Change its default value to 1. Select these nodes, press C and rename it. Now by default the RGB values of our texture are in the 0 to 1 range. 
but vectors need to go from minus 1 to 1. So we will remap the sample flow map using a multiply node and multiplying it by 2, then adding it by minus 1. This operation converts red and green direction that is 0 to 1 to real vector space that is minus 1 to plus 1, which is essential for accurate tangent directions. Now, since we only need R and G channel data for tangent vectors, we will remove the blue channel by multiplying the result by a yellow color. This zeroes out the Z value. Then lastly, connect the multiply node to the output result and save it. Select our tangent map and add a texture object node to add it in our material. Then add the material function that we created just now. Now you will ask why I have added this node. This is because we cannot add a float3 node to a texture2 d input. Connect the texture object node to your material function. Then connect the material function to the tangent of our material. Now you will see that the highlights are following our texture. Now what if we want to switch between this flow based tangent, this static tangent or disable it. So for that first we will create a constant 3 vector. Then we will create two static switch parameter nodes and rename them. Then connect them as shown here. And lastly, connect the switch parameter to our master material. Change the group name and sort priority of every parameter. Now select all tangent nodes, press C and rename it. Then save the material. Now open its material instance and let's see each tangent settings effects on our mesh. And that's how you can create a fully controllable anisotropic material in a real engine using both a tangent map and a procedural method with texture coordinates and also how to create a material function to sample our flow map. Now if you found this helpful, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and drop a comment if you want more breakdown like this.